But I know everybody knows I'm a heathen sometimes, but I'm trying to do better. And although my book, God Must Have Forgot About Me, taught me that he didn't, I'm so glad to finally bring somebody here who I know has filled up my spiritual cup, and that is the Bishop Marvin Sapp. Listen, I have been a fan of yours for a long time. And, you know, I, I will say if my life had a song, it would have been Never Would Have Made It, because literally wow. I wake up every day and feel like I never would have made it. So I'm so honored to have you here on the show. Welcome. Man, it is a great, great pleasure. I appreciate you guys uh, being patient as I was trying to figure this whole, you know, uh, social media technology thing. You know, uh, t it was it was tough, but we finally got here. Well, listen, it's OK. By the grace of God. Look, you know, what's crazy is I um, in my book, I talk about how I grew up in the foster care system. My foster father was a he was a pastor, um, Elder Easter. And you know, there's just something about anointed people, you know, when you're in their presence and then there's something when you're around people who, you know, anointings on their card, but not may, may not be in their life. So I know that you're one of those people that is anointed. Um, I, I've never gotten a chance to talk to you. So I just want to know, like in these times, when you look at the, the especially the last year, when you think about what's going on in the world, do you think there's a spiritual warfare happening? <laughs> absolutely absolutely i think the enemy is really trying to stop us from uh having this conversation but uh we're gonna press on in and and fight through it and see what happens right exactly and i don't know if it was co if it's covid donald trump when you look at the last let's just say the last four-year period do you what have you been able to tell your congregation or the people that you minister to on what we're actually experiencing because i know when uh when trump first got in office they said my friend uh, he said well you know this might be the last days and then the last couple years he was like oh jesus is on his way back <laughs> you know, take us home. what have you been able to make how have you been able to make sense of this to the people that you lead i've been really just challenging them to just really think about you know, this time of isolation, seclusion, this time of quarantine as an opportunity for them to really be able to, you know, forecast their own futures. If, if you've had nothing, you've had a lot of time to redesign, to recalibrate, to rethink, you know, how you're going to live the rest of your life. And, you know, the reality is, is that based upon what has happened in the pandemic, tomorrow's not promised. So let's get started doing what we desire to do and uh, make sure that this is not a season of procrastination, but that you make a decision now to go get it. No, that's great because I also talk about, you know, you, you can't live by faith and fear at the same time. For me, I just choose to have faith. And even before the pandemic, you know, uh, I had a lot of ups and downs in my life, death of my brother, death of my mother, foster care, abuse, uh, molest, the different things. And, I've, and, and, you know, when you're going through the storm, you really don't know, you know, exactly what's happening. But when you when you when you understand faith and you learn faith, how can you be fearful that you're not going to make it through, you know? OK, well, you know, I'm, I'm just a very strong believer that faith isn't something that's like really big. The reality is, is that faith is just little incremental steps that we need to take in order to make sure that we get to the place that we desire to get, which is our ultimate goal. So I've been challenging. I've been challenging the people that I pastor and even those that watch me uh, via social media. You know, listen, I, in this season, you know, don't worry about the pace or how fast you get there. Uh, just make sure that you are consistently moving in the direction uh, that you can ultimately reach your goal. And that is what you desire to reach. So, you know, right now it's, it's not about big steps. It's not about major moves. It's, it's just about making consistent movement forward. And if you do that, you know, the rest of your days would be the best of your days. Mm. I love that. I actually have a question for you about not necessarily faith, but grace. Um, like Jason mentioned, you're very anointed. When I listen to your music, I listen to your music a lot on Sundays when I'm cleaning. So I'm, geeking out, I'm geeking out right now um, because <laughs> Sunday is the day that I heal. Um, and you're such an instrumental part of people healing from you remotely. I can't even imagine what it's like to be around you on a regular basis, right? So for people like you who are healers, how do you, in the midst of all this adversity, stop yourself from burning out? Because I've often found myself wanting to help others heal, but to my own detriment. And I can imagine that you experienced that probably tenfold. Well, I, you know, first, I, I understand that, that I'm not a healer. Uh, I'm a conduit. 
In other I words, that. you know, I, I allow God to like the flow through me. And, you know, I've always, I try to the best of my ability, you know, be the vessel uh, that God wants to use and just try to get messaging out that will encourage people to get to that place. When you look at the last four years with Trump, um, are you one of those pastors that's out there telling his flock, don't y'all go there? Or do you stay neutral when it comes to politics? Because sometimes that could divide the congregation. And the second part to that is when you look back over those last four years, <laughs> have you thought about the black church's role in um maybe not guiding their congregations enough to maybe vote in a different way. Well, you know, I'm very different when it comes to uh, the political landscape, simply because a lot of people don't know uh, because I don't really publicize it, but I'm actually on the national board for the national black action network. Mm. Um, oh. When it comes to my position as it pertains to, to politics though, you know, I don't necessarily get up in the pulpit and share a whole lot of things as it pertains to direction that, you know, my members should vote or so on and so forth. Because the truth of the matter is, is that I personally benefit and have benefited from the policies of what Trump has put in place. But at the same token, I don't pastor people that benefit from the policies. So because I don't pastor people that benefit from the policies uh, that Trump has made, uh, from a from a tax standpoint, you know, I let them know. I'm like, look, you know, it's not just about voting your conscience. I believe personally that government is in place to help people. I don't believe that government is in place to, you know, uh, cause those of us who live in the one percentile to make more money. I believe the government is supposed to be there to help people. So I make sure I get up and I make those statements. I'm like, look, you know, am I pro-life? Absolutely, I'm pro-life, but I'm pro-life from birth to death. I'm not just pro-life as it pertains to in the womb. So it's it's more to it to me than when it comes to those types of things. And and I get up and I make sure that, you know, I express, you know, my opinion. I don't tell people who to vote for because I don't think that that's my responsibility. I've actually lost members because of the things that uh, I've shared over the pulpit. Uh, but at the same token, I just believe that we need to be informed as well as we need to use the pulpit because with all of the individuals that show up on Sunday, it gives us a real opportunity to speak truth to power. And hopefully, you know, people will take that which they hear, formulate their own concepts, thoughts, ideas, and then be able to, you know, exercise their God-given ability and authority by going out and effecting change through their vote. So, you know, that's, I think that's a part of our responsibility as, you know, pastoral gifts. And I do it to the best of my ability. Because the re reason why I ask the question is, you know, we were living in in times when I talk about spiritual warfare and just the, 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 the landscape of where we find ourselves in the world. When I think about some of the greatest people in the world, Dr. Martin Luther King is among those people at the top. He was a pastor and, you know, led a revolution that we're still fighting this day, although it seems like we've seen a lot of change. You know, we could see Kamala in the White House. We've seen Barack, but we still know with Black Lives Matter and George Floyd that issues that we faced back in the 60s and before have, are still uh, prevalent in today's uh, society. So when I look at the role of pastors, I, I tend to think like there are some who, you know, just have a reach and an influence over the masses. And I kind of wonder if there's ever the pressure to just really d get in and lead that way. Or do, or do they mm -hmm. find themselves just ministering in the way that they, you know, that the gift shows up for them? Well, I think, you know, everybody has a specific assignment. Every, everybody's not you know, supposed to be out from a pastoral standpoint it too. Everybody's not supposed to be out there in the forefront. You know, some of us are not equipped to do it. You know, uh, the reason why, you know, I work with, you know, uh, Al Sharpton and, you know, my thing is behind the scenes. I know, you know, if he needs me to do something from the standpoint of musical, you know, or musically rather, you know, to sing or to do something like that, that's, that's part of my assignment to make sure that, we bring the entertainment piece uh, to that galvanizing message. Um, you, you really have to know your place. Uh, everybody's not assigned to be in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Some of us 
can try to push our way to that platform and then get out there and make some real fools of ourselves and make ourselves look horrible as a, you know, colored African-American community. Um, so know your space, know your place and play your role. Everybody can't be the quarterback. Everybody cannot be the quarterback. We need folks to be linemen. We need people mm -hmm. to be on the return team. We need people to be on the kickoff team. So once you understand your place, and understand your position, just play it well. That's what I do. I just play my position as well as I possibly can. I like that because we had Al Sharpton here on the show, and he said something similar to that because I said, oh, would you be a part of Biden's cabin? And he said, no, I affect more change on the outside. So I'm going to stay on yeah. the outside. And I think what makes him such a good leader and what makes you such a good pastor and musician is you know where you fit in it all. And I think that, you know, I've even struggled with my own role in the Black Lives Matter movement. I want to be right in on the front line, but then I think, well, hey, I got this platform with an audience so I can play the outside and just keep sharing and elevating the message. And I'm still as much an integral part of change as the people on the front line. So I, that, that's, um, I appreciate that. Well, you know, everybody, it's a puzzle and every guy, everybody has to know where they fit. So, mm -hmm. you know, Sometimes, you know, because we're younger, younger people don't get it. But after being here 54 years, you know, I, I really understand uh, where where it is that I'm supposed to be. And and I just believe that I play my part pretty good. <laughs> Next, I have a question wanna... about the mechanics. Oh, sorry, Jason. I just had a quick question about the mechanics of what you do. Now that it's COVID, are you guys still having service in person or how is that? going because there's there's something so great about being surrounded by people when you want to worship but i would think that right now that's kind of complicated for you guys our church stayed closed for a very long time and when i say the church stayed closed i mean the building um because i'm a strong believer that the church has never closed uh the only thing that has happened is that the pews mm. have changed mm. now the pews are in the homes Mm -hmm. uh, so what we did is, is we went and made sure that we updated our entire ministry. I ripped out the entire pulpit area, got rid of the choir stand, put LED wall in, uh, made it so that it was visually appealing as well as I made sure, uh, that the content of that, which we shared was impactful and empowering as well. So, um, we wanted to make sure that, the, that our membership that watched, that they enjoyed it because the truth of the matter is, is that everybody is now online. Everybody is Facebook yep. living. Everybody is Instagram living. So we needed to make sure that our ministry was, you know, up to snuff and up to par. Mm -hmm. and, and we did a, did a, a really, really good job and a lot of hard work to ensure that that happened. We have a team to come in and they, uh, you know, sanitize the entire sanctuary all of the bathrooms, everything. People have to wear masks. Um, mm -hmm. We have Purell stations all over the place. We take temperatures. We go through that every week. I mean, we average on Sunday 100,000 views. So there's no way possible I can get all of those folk in a 1500 <laughs> seat church anyway. So the impact during this season to me has been far greater for churches across the board Yep. Because we've been able to minister to larger crowds on an ongoing basis. So I kind of feel like, you know, even though the pandemic was a bad thing, the truth of the matter is, is I, I kind of feel like it sparked an, an amazing revival. That was going to be my question. Um, we look at 2020 as the worst year in decades, but I hate dwelling on the negative. And I wanted to see from your point of view, how has 2020 inspired you and what has that year impacted uh, what you do as a pastor? Or as an entertainer? Um, it put me in a position where I had to reimagine what church really looked like and how church was going to be done. And to me, honestly, it was fun. Uh, fun trying to figure out new and innovative ways in order to uh, message or send a message to the masses. As an entertainer, for the last, I've been doing this for 32 years professionally. Mm. I've averaged being on a plane twice a week for the last 32 years. I've flown almost 7 million miles on Delta Airline alone. I needed this break. 
So, <laughs> so I'm good. you know, I was like, hey, listen, you know, I'm all right. You know, I saved money. I put money away. So, you know, over the last year. That, that's the thing. You know, that's the thing. Although it's been tragic for a lot, it, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a blessing to slow down because you didn't, you probably didn't even realize, uh, like, I can only imagine your life, but we didn't even realize how much we were running until our body was forced to stop and our mind was still running. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's been a blessing in many ways too. Mm -hmm. It's been, I mean, you know, I have no complaints. I'm going to be honest. You know, I missed a lot of money. I'm going to be honest about that. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the break, the rest, um, the ability to recalibrate, uh, to think things through, to really be able to write down stuff, forecast things, and what it taught me is I should have did this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Speak on it. I shouldn't have had to be forced to do it. And, I, and, and sometimes I think that's what God is trying to get us all to understand, that we're so busy being so fast paced and doing things and always trying to be busy, trying to be a boss, you know, trying to secure the bag. You know, I think we've lost focus on what life is really about. And sometimes we just need to rest and reflect. And that's what, you know, 2020 did for me. It gave me an opportunity to rest and reflect.